We're here with Dr. Robert Melamed, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little about what you're involved with. All right, well, I'm a professor at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, where formerly I was chairman for a few years. And now, in addition, i have uh, involved in creating a, a new company, publicly traded company, Cannabis Science. We're on the NASDAQ, and we're a fully reporting bulletin board company. And our goal is to get cannabis-based medicines through the FDA so that they'll be available to anybody who needs them in any state in the union and to have it covered by health care. It, it only seems appropriate that after all these years of the government uh, tormenting people that now they should be actually helping us to use cannabis. I see. Well, what kind of conditions would, would, would your company be able to benefit? Well, right now we're targeting really PTSD and chronic pain because being in Colorado Springs, which is a military town, we see all the time uh, soldiers and other military personnel who are really suffering from the lack of cannabis. Uh, currently, in my opinion, the medical policies that are, have been implemented to treat people with post-traumatic stress and so often the result of the various injuries that they have are literally the cause for the fact that there are more soldiers dying from suicide than there are from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And what I'm really saying here is that people who have chronic pain should not be using narcotics or no more narcotics than they will need after they've already been, after they've been using cannabis. Cannabis really is the ideal medicine for chronic pain. And if it's not sufficient, then you supplement with narcotics. It turns out that the simultaneous use of narcotics with cannabis, the cannabis reduces the amount of narcotics that are necessary, depending on the narcotic being used, somewhere between 4 and 25 fold. And it also seems to reduce the, uh, the, the propensity to develop a, a, a tolerance to the pain relieving effects. Well, how does cannabis work well with narcotics? Well, it's a, it's a complicated circuitry that's not all 100% clear. Uh, there is overlap between the biochemistry of the system. Some of the receptors have seem to have crosstalk in them. But cannabis itself directly uh, impacts on our uh, sensation, or the acquisition of pain, the transmission of pain, and then the perception of pain in, in, in our minds. And at all of those levels, uh, there's a cannabinoid involvement that can... Uh, turn down essentially the, the pain effects and the perception of pain. So it's, you know, it's a very important modulator. That's part of what it's evolved to do. And obviously, uh, if you have an acute injury, you know, you get your arm blown off. Immediately, you want narcotics. There's just no question about that. But when you're dealing with a lifetime, why put somebody on a drug that's addictive, that tends to be depressing? There's a holistic view to everything, and that's ten that tends to be how I look at the world. I try to understand what's going on from this big picture so that we can start to, you know, manipulate to some degree and become, in, in a, in a uh, symbiotic manner, part of what's going on rather than fighting the flow. But you also want to be able to direct it to some, to some extent. So, uh, you know, the cannabinoid system within us is very much involved in allowing us to adapt to change and to promoting creativity, which is what then allows us to create new channels to shift the way things are flowing. And what I'm trying to do with Cannabis Science, which is a publicly traded company, traded on the uh, NASDAQ bulletin board, a fully reporting company, symbol CBIS, what we're trying to do is create a new paradigm, essentially, for capitalism. Because capitalism in, is really very uh, parallel with evolution in that you have a selection of the fittest. But the problem with capitalism as I see it is that the, the way it's being driven by greed and selfishness, by essentially the wrong kind of mindset for the individual who've been successful up to this point, uh, is inappropriate for the future. I mean, it's been maybe useful to really drive things in terms of our uh, technological developments and a variety of other things. But in order to have a world community that's sustainable, we have to shift away from greed and use the same motivating principles, though, in terms of selection of the fittest. 
in order to move into a sustainable future. So what we're trying to do with cannabis science is on the one hand provide value to investors, but I think even more importantly is to use the company as a tool for change. Because when people invest in us, what we're trying to do is get medical marijuana ex extracts, plant extracts, through the FDA, in particular to treat PTSD and chronic pain in veterans, because these people are literally dying. At, they're dying from suicide at a more rapid rate right now than they're dying from the Afghanistan and Iraqi wars. So that tells you there's a fundamental problem here. And our endocannabinoid system you know, really shows us the way because what our endocannabinoid system does with respect to memory is, it, one, again, you have to have this balance between remembering and forgetting. Everything's always a balance of opposing forces. So if you imagine remembering all the unpleasant things in your life and having those dominate your consciousness, you can see that there's a problem. And it's your endocannabinoids that help you forget unpleasant memories. So if you've been overstressed or genetically, biochemically limited in terms of your ability to deal with stress, then you need to help supplement those, you know, those helpful effects that the cannabinoid system provides us with. And the best way to do that in these conditions really is to supplement with phytocannabinoids, the plant compounds that so uniquely interact with our endocannabinoid system. Again, to help protect neurons, to rewire neurons, to grow new neurons that allow us to uh, change the way we're thinking and to, you know, better adapt to those stressful circumstances. So what we're trying to do with cannabis science on the one hand is, is provide investors with the opportunity to invest in a company that's trying to promote this fundamental change by allowing more cannabis to be entered into our human population because that's what we need really now uh, for mankind's survival is we have to change the way we think uh, in a way consistent with harmony and creativity and solutions and optimism and cooperativity, all the things that people who use cannabis knows it promotes. Uh, but also in terms of these individuals that they, that they individually can benefit. So, Again, the model is to allow people to invest in that change, but furthermore, we're going to be and already actually have acquired dispensaries. And what that's allowing us to do then is to have the people who are using marijuana, by buying their medicine, they're also investing in the company's ability to travel through the FDA and to spread the medicine so that everybody can go to a pharmacy in any state and pick up cannabis extracts and have it covered by their health system, their health care system. I think that's, that's one of the biggest problems with the commercial, with commercializing. And it's inevitable that this is, this is going to be a tremendous industry, you know. But, yeah. the, the, but it, I guess the real quandary is making sure that the compassion stays, that compassion stays in that yeah. equation. Well, we are 100% in favor of legalization. But we know that even if it were legal today, there's going to be a subset of the population who wants to go to the doctor, get a prescription, go to a pharmacy, get the highest quality, standardized, regulated pro product, and have it covered by health care. Right. So that's, the, that's who we ultimately want to address. But in order to have that limited group available, you gotta, we want everybody else to have, do, be able to do what they want. You know, I mean, the idea of regulating growth of a plant that's an anti-aging drug that kills cancer is just a little absurd to me. Uh, but nevertheless, that's the society we're in, and the way we're going to change it is by having more cannabis in the society because of how it promotes open-mindedness and the ability to change. So, you know, there's a, there's a whole big feedback loop in here, and we're trying to have the company really serve as this novel paradigm for uh, a new way of being. Well, Doctor, I'd like to thank you it's for been being my pleasure. here with us today. Anytime. <laughs>